welcome to October. Welcome to Auntie Tay's YouTube channel. I am so excited to show you guys how to make this amazing blinged and epoxied tumbler. And you know if you're gonna go out and dress up, go to Halloween parties, all of that fun things, you have to accessorize with your tumbler. And what better way than to do a theme with your costume. So let's go learn how to make this ice cream bling tumbler. Hey everyone, it's Sam from the Auntie Tay team and you're watching The Sam Show. Let's go make some fun things. So we are going to start with a cafe 22 ounce tumbler from the Steel Magnolia company. That's where I like to get my tumblers and this one was so cute. I love the top. You can switch it out between the cafe lid and just a regular twist on lid. But we need to prep our tumbler first. So I'm just take a sanding block and I'm going to scratch up the surface. And I also sanded the cafe lid because you're going to want that to be prepped as well. And now I'm just taking paper towels and washing the dust off before I take it inside. And now we're in my kitchen and we're going to wash it in the sink. And you just use water and some dish soap. For a side-by-side -side comparison of a properly prepped and sanded tumbler versus a non-prepped tumbler, you can see the sanded one. It takes a long time for the water to come off of the tumbler and with the prepped one it beads up and washes away. This is going to make a big difference with the longevity of your tumbler so you're going to want to make sure you sand and prep it so you get lots of long use out of your epoxy tumblers. Once your tumbler is washed and dried I am going to go in with Auntie Tay's chalked up paint and I am using the color terracotta. I later change um, to a brighter orange but I'm using the color terracotta for the base coat and I'm using a Dollar Tree Wet n Wild brush. Lauren Quigley from Lauren Quigley's Creation used this brush and I recommended it for painting on tumblers and yeah she she was right this is amazing to get a good even coverage so just using a slightly damp brush I painted it with the chalked up paint and I don't know if it's because of it's a makeup brush it goes on better but you're just gonna want to do a thin even layer trying to get out all of the brush strokes and when your first layer is completely dry go in with your second layer and this time i'm using the chalked up paint color tangerine it's just a brighter happier orange that's what i wanted for my ice cream cone color for my second base coat and you're gonna do another thin layer so i set the tumbler aside and got working on the lid using the marvy deco color oil based markers i went around and did little dabs of like sprinkle shapes that were about the size of the bigger like ss20 bling when the paint was dry i then took fusion tack from super tight adhesives which I put in a smaller bottle I think it's easier to use um, and anti tay bling in the color lots of pink I started blinging my lid I just use a you know a little bit of glue you don't want it to be super thick and then I use the anti tay bling tool and started blinging around all of the sprinkles if you want to do the sprinkles first um, sometimes it's a little bit easier uh, it really doesn't matter but it's important that we had the lid sanded so that 
the glue can adhere to the rougher surface and the bling's gonna stay on for a lot longer had we not sanded the top. You'll just bling your little heart out and finish the lid, which it doesn't take super long. I like blinging and watching a TV show or, you know, catching up on a podcast. You can see I decided that I wanted to do the sprinkles instead of continuing with the pink. That was just because I think it's easier instead of trying to go around the sprinkles to just put the bling there and then I can put the pink as close up to the sprinkles as the bling that's already there. And for the sprinkle colors, I just picked the coordinating color and used a solid color of bling. And then I started filling back in with lots of pink. Um, here I'm using the Marvy Jewel Picker tool. That's what it's called. Um, and I liked using that too. I think the pros to it are it's a lot easier to pick up bling. Uh, the con was I kept getting glue on the tip and it was a little bit harder to clean off because the jewel picker end is already sticky unlike the anti-tape wax tip. But I think compared to the anti-tape bling tool, the jewel picker tool is the both have pros and cons so they kind of even each other out but I bo like both of them. And if you didn't know, um, the super tight adhesive and Marvy with the jewel picker and their vast array of markers and paint pens are both anti-tay partners. So if you're an anti-tay member, you get a discount on those partners websites as well. And look how gorgeous that lid turned out. Um, but I did decide to do that bottom edge and I think that made a huge difference in the end blinging that outer edge. I tried to pick pretty similar size stones for the edge. I didn't want to use any super small ones just because I knew the ones that were on that the ridge were going to get a lot more use when you're twisting your tumbler on and off. So I wanted a little bit bigger stones on the edge. And then there's that little gap in between the two where I filled in with some itty bitty little bling and that's what I love so much about anti tay bling mixes is the vast array of sizes. Okay, now it is time to epoxy our tumbler. You can, you can epoxy your tumbler first and then work on your lid later. This was just the order I did it in. So I got my tumbler turner all set up and prepped and wearing full PPE, respirator, gloves, apron, and being in a closed off space, I mixed my epoxy. I use counterculture DIY artist resin. It's a little bit thicker and I mixed that up slowly even though it was sped up in the video to avoid bubbles. Then with my turner on, I applied the resin. So I torched it first because there were a lot of bubbles because I could have been a little bit slower with mixing, but I am putting the epoxy on first to apply the glitter because I'm using a chunky glitter. The glitter I am using is from the anti tay line from itsprettypersonal.com, who is another anti tay partner. And the color I am using, the name of the glitter is called Sunray. It is super pretty and on an orange base, it looks one minute yellow and next minute orange. I really like it. After I applied a thin layer of epoxy and torched it, I then got a piece of paper to catch my fallen glitter and I shook it on there. 
I only did a thin layer of glitter. Um, this helps prevent it from sticking up so you have less layers of epoxy. And make sure you get the bottom of your tumbler and if you need to, with a gloved finger, tap down the edge and flatten any of the chunky pieces that you might need to if they're sticking up a little bit. And you'll want to let that turn for about six hours. When it's time for the next coat, I like to use quick coat before I epoxy over my glitter. That will help prevent the epoxy from repelling off of the glitter. Um, quick coat is from Counterculture DIY. It's the same company where I get my epoxy from. Um, you do want to wear a respirator with this as advised on the bottle and I'm just using a brush and I have a lid on it that allows me to just squirt a little bit out and you just need a really really thin layer of quick coat and it dries really fast so within a half an hour to an hour after you apply it you can then go in with your second layer of epoxy to cover up your glitter that's what I'm doing now is my second layer of epoxy to seal my glitter after the quick coat has dried. Just make sure to torch any bubbles and just let it spin for six to eight hours. After the second coat, my tumbler was still too bumpy to sand, so I went in with another coat of epoxy before I sanded it. If I would have sanded it, some of the glitter finish would have rubbed off. I would have sanded it off. So I just went in with another coat of epoxy. After that coat, my tumbler was smooth enough where I could sand it. It covered all the glitter so I wasn't going to rub the finish off. So I sanded the tumbler and you can tell the finish is a lot more dull. And now what I am doing is using the Marvy paint pens again and I'm going to kind of sketch where I want my ice cream drip and sprinkles to go. Since my ice cream is pink, I use the pink marker and I just freehanded where I thought the drips would look best. And I wasn't too worried how it didn't match. I just went and filled in a little bit later. And then I did color in all of the spots. What coloring it in helps with is if you don't get all the bling pushed up next to each other super close it it kind of fills in that color for you i wasn't super meticulous on coloring it in it didn't have to be perfect it just was going to help the overall look if i didn't get bling in there as tight to each other as i would you know hope for then I thought I would draw on like the waffle cone grid marks and I did not like it. I decided to scratch that idea. And if you're going to buy the deco color markers, I highly recommend also buying the deco color remover marker. It worked way better. I did the excess with a baby wipe. And then I went in with the marker to remove any of the leftover residue and it was amazing. It is a little fumy, so be careful you know, not to overexpose yourself, but it made a huge difference on getting that. So I would get it if you're going to buy any of the markers and if you messed up a drip or did anything, it's so easy to take it off. I wanted to do a cutesy little saying, so using the anti tay membership fonts, I use Galliant Regular, and I made my own SVG 
for this and it says sugar rush and pixie dust because sugar rush is vanilla bee's game and pixie dust because we all need a little pixie dust in our life and some sugar rush i could use a sugar rush right now <laughs> and i used oracle 651 vinyl in a uh, like dark pink a hot pink i guess you would say and a light pink i just thought it would match the colors of the ice cream really well i used my favorite the clear grid line transfer tape that's from shop anti tape to transfer the vinyl on there and then i decided i wanted to fill in a drip a little bit farther then i sealed all of this the paint and the vinyl with resin so you go in and do one or two more coats to seal everything in to complete your tumbler Woo! now that our tumbler is epoxied and sealed and looking all cute we are not done now we have to add the bling onto the tumbler part. So you're gonna go in and sand just where you're going to put the bling. You're gonna wanna be really careful about, you know, not getting it off of those drips because it'll just keep your tumbler scratched. But it's really important to scuff up that epoxy so that the glue and the bling cling on to the tumbler and will last a long time. Then we go in again with Fusion Tac glue and our anti tay bling. And I started off with the sprinkles again. I just thought it was easier this way. And you just have to keep going. Go slow. Be careful not to you know, glue and then turn your tumbler on, on wet glue and it messes up your bling, you know, just be careful. You can see I'm using the jewel picker again. And then I went in and filled in with lots of pink. It turned out so cute. And then a bonus I did is actually using one of my sucker molds I made. I made it cherry colored and I'm using the bling incredible for the red part of the cherry and then um, Rex for the stem. And both of these are part of the Pixar bling collection line. And I had to make a straw topper. So I blinged the front part and then I went on the back and I have a little acrylic piece that makes a straw topper and I it was just the little extra on top you know that little extra cherry on top see it was pretty but it needed that little extra pizzazz and You'll hand wash this only and just be really careful with the bling, but the glue should hold on super tight and you'll just treat it like you normally would an epoxy tumbler, no dishwasher, hand wash, do not soak it in the sink. But I hope you guys love it.